Alrighty guys, what's going on? This is Nox coming at you from Mega Man X2. Alright, so through the Miracle of Save State technology, um, I mean, I'm gonna be frank, I could go and I could just keep redoing the beginning of this level. It's fucking annoying. It's really fucking irritating. And in modern game development, shit like this wouldn't fly, because it's not... I mean, it's challenging, I'm not gonna lie, it's not that it's not hard or, you know, a worthy challenge. But it's just fucking annoying. It's not a fun challenge. It's not like trying to beat a boss or navigate through a difficult area. It's just, can you get this picture pixel perfect thing going? Mm. So, we'll see. Hopefully I can demonstrate to you guys how to actually get this. Largely for your own purposes. I mean, this game, you don't really need all of the sub tanks. Even two is probably enough. But just to show you guys where, all, where they all are. Ah, figure it's working. Alright, so, apparently, we gotta kinda dash ahead here. Oh shit. <laughs> it briefly paused on me, I didn't like that. Uh, okay. So, let's redo that one, because apparently, that right there... Let's load game position, okay, great, great job, great job Capcom. Uh, apparently I have to dash through these. And then I ride this one. <laughs> okay, or not. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely beautiful. You guys did you guys did a great job. This is not at all irritating. This isn't at all not fun. This is truly perfect. No! <laughs> oh my god! Whoever designed this needs to be fucking killed. They need to be killed, and their bones needs need to be buried next to Hitler. I'm just I'm just saying this is this is just, no absolutely no no. Why would you do such a thing as this? This is awful. All right. Uh, like, I'm not, I, I mean, okay, that was not a great one. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not, I'm not like an absolute perfect fucking master of this game, but like, you guys see, I'm getting pretty damn close. That's ridiculous. That's fucking ridiculous. Oh, okay. Alright. Nope. No, no. Like, you... Probably should have made that a couple the ledge a couple pixels down. That would have made this a lot less like I want to fucking rip my eyes out of my head and a lot more doable. Oh, and I barely grabbed it there and fell off immediately. So like it's not that it's undoable. Legit. I most of the time when I play through this, I just redo this level again and again until eventually I get it. But that's that's not fun. That's not a good gameplay experience. That's quite frankly tedious. And I know a lot about tediousness because I am a teacher. And a lot of the stuff we have to do there is fairly tedious. So consider me an expert in tedium. Tedium? Tedium. There we go. See, like, you can eventually get it, but, like, was that fun? No. Would I have rather kicked myself in the crotch? Yes. Yes. But there we go, that's how you get it. Alrighty, so now that that shit's out of the way, let's move on to the Sigma levels. So these ones are a little more interesting. I got my coffee. Oh, great god, Caffeine. Grant me your strength. Sharpen my mind. Make my wit as a rapier. These levels also have fucking awesome music, which gives me. Ooh, 
combat spikes are there. Which gives me a lot of a lot of energy back. I needed to recover a little bit of psychological mana, if you will. So, I, I have to admit, I'm a little bit confused as to why there's so many of these robot bats. If I was building an evil robot army, I wouldn't really assume bats would be what I'd go to for my, like, basic combat troops. And yet, it appears that there's more bats and more drill-bit-nosed frogs than anything else in this game. Although... I will give it a little bit of credit, because I think one of the ideas is that it's supposed to be that they're, you know, they're like robots that were originally built for industry, which are now rebelling. Which, in in that case, it makes sense for you to drill bit in those guys, I'm sure they're good for maintenance and shit. So it makes a little bit more sense. Fucking bitch, trying to crush me. It's a very unsportsmanlike. What's over here? And why do these claws keep trying to stop me? Must be something good. I guess this is one of those things where there's like two different ways to get to the and damn ah oh, man instant kill traps. Challenging, but not fun. Which, I mean, we could chuck off to my lack of experience or talent, of it, but from a game design perspective, though, like, the point of the game is to have fun. Someone blowing up my phone by Kesha. Alrighty. Dopeness. Alright, so let's see. Who we got coming up? We got my favorite person in the world. Voila. <coughs> oh man. Still getting over a cold a little bit, but mostly good now. So for some reason he's weak against bubbles. He is the essence of raw power and violence, but he's weak against bubbles. Maybe there's some sort of complex philosophical statement in here. I kind of doubt it, but maybe. Yeah, who knows? I am certainly the kind to muse about strange things. There we go. And he is gone. What? How could you have overloaded my circuits? Arrgh! I don't know, man, because you fucking stood there and had a spike ball for a tail. It wasn't exactly a foolproof plan. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like Vegeta, I'm just saying. <sighs> Bet. 
All right. All right, so next x Hunter stage, we have to defeat Sergius. I kind of want to do a song about Mega Man X now, but I don't really know quite what I would do with it. Maybe I'll just put a reference or something like that. Uh, I'm not really, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty nerdy and I'm pretty open about my nerdiness, but I'm not exactly a nerdcore rapper. I actually don't know what, what you call my core. I'm not really hardcore, like gangster. Eldritch core? No. I'll have to invent a new core. Alrighty, so, this part right here, it's got these cute ass little platforms that somehow have jets of fire on the water, it's cool, it's awesome, I don't totally get it, but alright, you know, physics, uh, physics can do whatever it wants. There should be a platform coming down from both. And you know, you can duck onto the side, but then I risk being killed instantly by spikes versus taking a little bit of damage, which I don't really care quite as much about. I turned back! Oh! Ah! Uh, fucking instant death! Why? Why do these fucking games have such a fetish for instant death stuff? Oh, God. I'm gonna point out, as a. It's not that it's not. Not, not that you never see them, but think about how often in, in modern video games you just instantly fucking die, versus these old ones where it's just like, and you fuck one thing up, dead. Saying, I think that points something that that does point something out about evolving gameplay experience, because that's incredibly frustrating. Like, it didn't even send me back all that far, but it's just, it's fucking annoying. That's not fun. Now, trying to do something like beat a boss without getting hit, that's pretty fun. But, just going through and being like, oh man, touch them death spikes. Got a giant ass pit for y'all to get over. Irritating. Even though I'll totally concede that was my bad. I should have done better on that. I should not have gone back, I should just get one for Well, let's see, maybe these guys will be generous. Because here's another way to do this. Just, uh, crystallize them the enemies. Um, this guy... Uh, I usually like just... This one is... Whew, man, I'm not doing great in terms of my ammunition and whatnot, so... Let's just see. Okay, so this next one is going to be against Surgeons, uh, a.k.a. Dr. Wily. Dr. Wily! Talk to girlfriends! Dr. Mrs. The Monarch! So he has a giant, deadly mech. Ooh. 
and you actually have to destroy... You actually have to destroy all those little turrets before you can even hit him. Where that one, uh, so I know he he normally he goes and he shoots his little um he shoots those little beams that like split off into like four directions. What the fuck is that other one coming from? Is there like something off screen shooting at me? What the fuck? Yeah, it's just so chat. All right, let's see. Hopefully, I don't have to go through his level twice because I have no sub tanks. Could have filled up, but whatever. I said, this ain't me showing that I'm fucking perfect at this game. I am not a fucking crazy ass hardcore gamer or some shit. This is just a game that I really like, and I figured I might as well show it to you guys. So his weakness is the Sonic Slicer. I do want to point out that um, it's not that his uh, turrets are weak against the Silk Shot, it's just that the Silk Shot does a fucking ridiculous amount of damage for some reason. I don't totally know why, but uh, apparently that's just how it be. Okay, so if, if the bottom of the platform can stop just guarding you endlessly, that would be great. There we go. There we go. Sorry for the sorry for the somewhat lax commentary at this point. I'm also just don't want to get killed by this motherfucker. There we go. Go the fuck away. This is impossible! The prophecy must be fulfilled! No! And with that, he explodes. Too bad, so sad. And unlike X1, I'm actually not sure of a, like, great place to go and just fill up the subtanks, but... My intuition tells me that Wheel Gators is probably the best because there's a lot of enemies near the beginning. So I'm going to take this opportunity uh, to return to his level. Fight that shit off. And then we just have the... We've just got the final X Hunter, right? There's only, there's only one of them left. And, you know, it's not like there could possibly be some sort of larger villain behind them, right? Definitely not. Could it be Sigma? No, it's impossible. It's Sigma. It's always Sigma. It's always, always, always Sigma. I think he's actually the final boss of every... every game that actually exists in the series. And some of you may say, but Nox, what about X8? And to you, I say, X8 doesn't exist and that you speak heresy, and that you will be burned in righteous fire for even bringing up the fact that such a nightmarish abomination and insult to this great series could possibly exist. That's all I gotta say to you. Aww, yee! And he decided to just die. Okay. So I think the best place is where the, the bird characters are. 
So we're gonna go a little bit further, and then I should be in a decent farming spot. Gator's got a real nice jazzy ass theme. It's a little known fact that Wheel Gator is actually a jazz composer. That was his original purpose. As it's well known that in the wild, alligators are excellent composers. And so, when they were trying to pull the robot version, they decided that, you know, a wheel alligator was, it was a good idea. The wheel is actually just a tool that he uses for keeping rhythm. Because he can keep rhythm with no metronome. No metronome. No metronome. There he goes. Where's that one coming from? I don't see any air carrier things in the sky. There we go. I guess this is where we want to go for our health boost. You know, the life is nice, but I'm really looking more for, for that extra health. Can you help me out here? There we go. Man, I wish there was an upgrade or something so you can just start each level out with a full sub thing. So I'd go for that upgrade in a sec. enough. Just figured I didn't want to go in there with a completely empty tank. Alrighty. Let's go fight the last X-Hunter, because I'm sure that he's the very last thing that we have to fight in this game. So this song gets remixed in Mega Man X6, and it serves as the uh, the music for the um, like second to last level. Gates Laboratory. And that version's pretty kick-ass, I must admit. So now we have a... Ooh! We have a fun-ass little puzzle that is, once again, incredibly tedious. So you have to use the platform, and what it does is it cycles between... Um, going. I think it goes 
up, and then it goes right, then it goes down, then it goes left, and it just repeats in a circle. So what you have to do is you have to jump at the right times so that you can get up to the top. And this one, I think, does the same thing. I think it's just there to demonstrate what the basic principle is. But I don't quite understand it, because it doesn't really do anything. There we go. Hopefully this one is on here. There we go. No! No! Oh, oh my god! Ah! Ah. Yeah, they 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 took some real notes on how to make things frustrating. Because hey, why not? No, it doesn't. Because you guys know how it makes you jump up a little bit. I was hoping that would let me uh, bypass this part. This incredibly, incredibly irritating, tedious, and annoying part. Where I messed one thing up and got a little bit too excited, and now I have to redo the whole thing. It's really good. It's great. It's excellent game design. I give it 10 out of 10. I give it 10 middle fingers right in your fucking eye out of ten. So that's my rating. But you know what I will say for it? It's not quite as bad as trying to get that fucking sub-tank, which whoever came up with that part really needs to be burned at the stake as a witch. Not that I have any problem with witches, but I have a problem with such clear malevolence and disdain for human life. I guess gonna get through there. Hmm. I'm reasoning my way through this. No. Oh great Cthulhu, dwelling in realms as yet unimagined, please, please grant me the strength to get me this. Because this is, uh, irritating to degrees that are beyond human comprehension. I'm clearly missing something here. How the fuck am I so- Ooh. 
don't know what's going on there. There we go. Okay, let's just, just bring it on up. Okay, I just want to say, whoever came up with that section is probably the same person who came up with the uh, Magnus Centipede sub-tank container. They need to be burned at stake. They need to be destroyed. Like, not since the blood starving beast have I so badly wanted to just smear something in existence. Actually, no, that's not true. Donald Trump is elected after that. Sorry for all the Trump jokes. I just, I really, truly hate him. Truly. Truly. Uh, okay, so, enough about that, enough of my rage, I'm gonna calm back down, and I'm gonna show you guys how to get across this part. This is actually kind of fun. So what you gotta do is you gotta appear, you hit this guy with the little crystallizer, and do the same thing as this guy. And then you get on up here, and you fight the easiest of the X Hunters, actually. Despite the fact that Agile is the last one, he's also the easiest. Which is kind of strange. So he just turns into a big UFO thing. And drops little platforms on you. And in my opinion, he looks really dumb. I don't really understand this form all that much. I don't know why he shoved his head through UFO. Maybe it's an homage to Sigma, who just loves shoving his head into the various other robot forms. But as long as you stay up here, he's pretty harmless. Like, he'll take a little bit of damage from the super falling platforms, but not much. And then he turns red for some reason. And you just keep shooting egg mines at him. Once again, don't totally know why that's his weakness. Especially because Agile is supposed to be he's supposed to be fast. So I would assume something like the Crystal Hunter, which is the you know the crystal snail weapon, the one that slows you down. I would probably even imagine that's B's weakness, because then you know if it slows him down, he can't move quite as quickly and you've taken away his strength, but eh. I don't work for Cat Bum. Alright. So now we just got... Fuck it, I'm gonna take one more shot. I'm gonna beat the next one. Beat all of X2 in a day. Now we get to the boss rush. And this part's fun, I always enjoy the boss rushes. Alright, so... Alrighty. So now, we'll finish off X2. This looks a little familiar, right? The Ascent? Kind of reminds me of the first, uh, the final Sigma level in the first game. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if that portends anything. I wonder if that indicates that a certain someone might be back. Might be behind all of this. Who knows? Okay, and here we got Wheel Gear, who I'll show you his weakness now. Good. 
And once he gets back into water. Stop hiding, you fucking cock! And uh, that attack's a little too instant for me. Uh, you could have a, a moment. Where you, there we go. Man, I gotta get Zen. Because a lot of these bosses take advantage of my great sweetness, which is just impatience. Oh, one fun thing that you'll notice about the bosses in the fight over the boss rush is that they all start out using their uh, sort of desperation attacks, you know, in rage mode. Normally, he waits until he's at about half health before he starts doing his little drill bit move, but when he's being fought for the second time, he'll just do it the whole fight. Oh, Wheel Gator. Man, what is that stuff down there? I think it's supposed to be oil, but my god, it looks like blood. And he's an alligator, which is a fairly violent animal to keep in mind. So he's actually, he, he used to scare me a little bit when I was like a little kid. Especially because he fucking like hides in the oil and shit. Oh, come on, motherfucking fuck shit, fuck fuck you. I will fucking hunt down your mother and kill her with an axe. Man, I wish I had a move where I could just vanish from the screen and... No, 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 game, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Don't fuck up on me, emulator. That's not what I meant by vanish. Oh my god, fucking stay above the ground for a second! Jesus Christ! There we go. Maybe he automatically ducks back down if I hit with his weakness. Because I don't remember him doing this quite as much when I was playing the first time. And just kind of lather in some feet. There you go. Oh, and I fell down the wall a little bit too far. And of course, that means that he once again heads under the water. Awesome. Could you just could you just stay above? Possibly just just not do this because it's uh. Annoying as fuck. You're gonna die, bro. You're gonna die. There we go. Go the fuck away. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. I think I had more difficulty from the second time, just as you fucking stayed out of the water the whole time. Just pop up, bro. Pop up. Do your little mouth shot thing. Pop take shots at you. Anywho, alright, so let's wheel get her. One of the few who's not totally trivialized by his weakness. Um, just because the way his fight works is it's largely based around him kind of evading you, staying out of the water, and doing these little attacks where he can't really hit. Now uh, let's see. Alright, so who what's he weak against? I think he's weak against the Crystal Hunter. He's fast, and since it slows him down, it'll probably weaken him. I don't remember. I'm gonna give it a shot, though. Yeah, there we go. He's a little special animation, too, so we know that he's weak against it. No. Oh. Called that one wrong. Oh, the fuck up. Yeah. 
So, like, despite all my complaints, and despite the fact that this game obviously has few flaws, overall, I do still really enjoy it. But, especially when you're doing something like, you know, playing on, like, a Let's Play, you, you know, you kind of want to show off to people like, Yeah, I'm pretty good at this. So, when shit happens like instant death, like, three times in a row, or you fail some stupid jump, it does tend to get to me, so I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to dilute my saltiness. At least to the degree that it should be, you know, I don't want, I don't want it to be like salt water, it should be like brackish water, at least. Ah, alright. So, moving on to the next one. And I have no idea which boss is in which uh, container, so we're just going to go on through. This is... oh! Magnus Centipede. Alrighty, so Magnus Centipede, when you go and you hit him with his weakness, uh, his tail falls off. It's a well-known fact that if a uh, silkworm fights a centipede, it will uh, slice off its tail with a pressurized beam of silk, which is what inspired this. The well-known enmity between these two insects. Actually, I don't really know what a centipede's weakness is. I mean, fire. Most things are weak against fire. But if there's like an exterminator in that that would be pretty cool. Actually, apparently X5 was supposed to have a boss in it that used um, poison gas, but it ended up being released a little bit after those sarin attacks, and they felt it would be sensitive, so they ended up cutting that, and we got Crescent Grizzly instead. It just kind of slashes. Fuck it, this open sucks. You're already missing your tail. I'm just gonna shoot you. So a lot of the Mavericks in this game, and in the first one, are former hunters. Like, they're the, the former things that were supposed to hunt down the robots that go rogue, and yet they themselves went rogue. And... Magnus Centipede is actually one that worked for, um, slash with Zero in the, like, stealth unit. So he's got some kind of ninja moves. Eat your heart out, Naruto. There we go. Alright, and he is exploding now. Well known fact about centipedes, especially the magnetic ones, they do tend to explode. When subjected to great levels of stress, they tend to detonate in a large number of explosions. Okay, so let's see. Who else do we have? I suppose I may as well finish the side of the room off. And let's see, this is... Ah, Crystal Snail. So Crystal Snail is weak against the Magnet Mine. Once again, don't totally get it. I mean, I maybe it's from the fact that he hides inside of this big-ass shell, but who the hell knows. Theoretically, a magnetic mine is probably good against most robots, right? But what it does is it tosses him out of the shell, and then he has to jump to get back into it. And he has a reasonable long stun animation, so especially given that he has a time-based attack with his cheap-ass version of so wild. It kind of helps to negate that. And this kind of is how you do it. He'll just keep kind of doing the same thing again and again. He'll wait, he'll jump up in the air, and then he'll 
If you go below him, he'll fall back down, lose an attack, and expose himself like a fool. I think there's a there is a fun thing I think you can do. Yeah, you can keep the shell away from him. Yeah, you can you can actually knock his little shell around like a soccer ball. Oh, man. Oh, shots are catching up to me. Ugh. I'm feeling a little bit sluggish. Or snailish, if you will. Alrighty then. Let's head on into this one and let's see who this is. Ah, uh, well, given that it starts off in a field of dead robots, I think I remember. This one kind of makes sense. Uh, like a moth to a flame, right? This spinning attack. He's pretty cool. He's one of my favorite balls in this game. For having a really interesting design. Not just in terms of like his appearance, but in terms of how the phases work. I don't totally understand the connection with the robot junkyard. I would imagine an animal that has to do more with something like rebirth would make more sense. Like if you're gonna do like a snake maybe. Like an Ouroboros or something, but who knows. Evidently my knowledge of animals and mythology is greater than that of Capcom. Actually, were there any sneak bosses in the Mega Man X series? Not the first one, not the second one, not the third one. I think the fourth one. Maybe the fourth one. Ugh, only six. And those are the only ones. There's only X1 through 6. And anything past that, if anyone even remotely suggests that such a thing exists, I will hunt you down and use your skull as a, um, athletic cup. So it couldn't possibly be one of those. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see who we got here. Oh, water sponge. He's another one who's just kind of wrecked by his weakness. And unlike Morph Moth, he goes into a really extensive um, sort of stun animation. As you can see, based on the fact that he can't really do anything. Maybe if I stand right in front of him, I'll be fine. Yeah, it works! I mean, then I end up getting hit by his other attack, but hey, I dodged the lightning. Oh, and if you kill him with the Sonic Slicer, fun thing, uh, instead of just exploding, he gets cut in half first, which I love. I love. It's the little things. It's the little things that's going to each other. Yes. Ah, alrighty. So I'm slowly, slowly falling behind in terms of health regeneration versus bosses. So I'm going to have to do a couple of them and not really take much damage if I want to avoid it. dying during the boss rush. Not that it's a huge concern because I do have a couple extra lives, but...
And Bubble Crab is one of those bosses where his weakness is actually not as good against him as just the regular X Buster. some extra health. There we go. And his cute little little crab friends just coming at me, but it's no use because the boss is dead and I have eye frames. I am invincible. I'm the Invincible X. Alright then, so let's see. I only have one left. Which I believe is Flame Stag. And he's weak against Bubbles! If you're yeah, if you're ever uh, if you're ever on the road and you're you're in an air with a lot of deer, and you need to kill them before they hit your car and deal thousands of dollars worth of damage because they're too fucking stupid to stay off the road, uh, just put a little bubble blower in the front. Oh, That's all it takes. like that. Now I will say, Flame Stag is a pretty cool design. The, like, the fire antlers. That's really cool. I don't really understand what deer have to do with fire, but that's fine. I don't quite understand what crab... Well, no, crabs and bubble legs kind of make sense. I don't really understand what sponges and wires have to do with each other either, but hey, you know, it's, it's all good. Yeah, so he's easy as shit, if you have his weakness. Not that he's incredibly challenging otherwise, but he is an absolute pushover if he has his weakness. Look at that, we beat all the copies of the bosses, so we must just be winning, right? It's Sigma! It's been a while, Mega Man X. What? Sigma? It seems that the X Hunters have failed, but don't worry. I have arranged for some new toys for you to play with. Oh my god. It's Sigma. Could you guys imagine? It's Sigma! Huh. Is the yeah, dinosaur team. Let's go do this one, get a little bit of extra health. And then let's fight some Sigma. So while I do this incredibly boring part, I'll try to keep you guys introduced in commentary. So Mega Man X, I think X6 came out in the early 2000s, and we've seen nothing in that series since. Now, I've also played some of the Mega Man Zero games, which I think is kind of... I don't know if they've been working on that one too much either. But I don't totally know why Capcom seems to have decided that they don't want to make any more Mega Man games. Which is crazy, because Mega Man is one of their kind of flagship series, and most people I know who like Mega Man really fucking love Mega Man, and the second another game comes out, they will grab that shit. So I don't totally know what's going on with that. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping they put something new out, 
It seems very unlikely that they're going to put out another Mega Man X game, especially because X7 and X8 were fucking horrible and don't actually exist, as far as I'm concerned. But I think there'd be a pretty big market for it if they were to make something like, you know, the original ones. Even if it's something like X6, which is very difficult, but which is still a really good game. I mean, there's there's certainly no lack of other good two-dimensional platformer games. Um, I've heard Hollow Knight's pretty good, and I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not the biggest gamer, but I'm at least somewhat apprised of what's going on. And there's definitely a lot of great options out there, so I don't really understand why Capcom would be willing to just sort of give up its market share, especially since they have such an established IP. But I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a Capcom executive. Or am I? Maybe I'm just doing all of this as a big PR stunt. Who knows? You guys know where I work. No one knows where I work. I don't know where I work. I don't even have a job. I don't exist. You're all just imagining this. I'm part of your collective imagination. I am the offspring of Nyra Lithotep. That last part is true, but we'll forget about that for now, and I'll get back to something more relevant. So, yeah, I guess, uh... In closing, if you guys do need to, if you're playing X2 and you do need to get some health, this is, I guess, the best place to do it. Just because that one thing keeps coming back, and it seems like it has a pretty high chance of smart health. Eh, fuck it. Pretty sure they're all full. Even if they're not, I'll be fine. Where's my soda? Oh my precious. Okay. So we're gonna go do the final X Hunters stage. The the Sigma stage. And this one's a little bit disappointing because with this one it's uh it's just the beginning of Magna Centipede stage, and then partway through the place where you fight the boss, or the, the mini-boss, you know, the little three-dimensional saber thing, that's where you have the Sigma fight. So, I would have really enjoyed if they could have made a new stage for this one. Like, it didn't have to be insanely long or anything either. Even if it was the same length, I'd still be fine with it. Um, or if it was something like in the first one, where you have that really... I mean, it's a short, it's barely even a stage. It's not even a stage, I'd even say. But you have that really cool dramatic ascent up to the final fighting the Sigma. Like, I liked that. I thought that was a really cool touch. So, I mean, all in all, I'd say... This game is certainly far from perfect, but it's really fun. Especially if you're not getting too concerned about getting every single collectible or anything. Because there's a couple of those that are really annoying. There's a couple places with instant kill traps and shit, but that's not too bad. It's kind of par for the course when it comes to platformers and Mega Man games. Where, much like Dark Souls, gravity is by far the greatest force in the universe. Huh, I guess I did have to up there. Man, I really gotta take a piss, but I'll suffer through it because I gotta do this. Oh shit! Damn, new Sigma. And Zero! So what happens is, if you get all of Zero's parts, then the X-Hunters try to build a kind of like copyright infringement version of Zero, where it's like this black version, and he just gets sort of instantly wrecked. Zero, the real Zero comes in, kills him, and is like, yo, let me show you where Sigma is. But since I fucked up and I didn't defeat all of the X-Hunters, I have to fight Zero before I fight Sigma. And this is a pretty cool fight. I like that he actually, like, damages the floor, and you can see the damage. 
it's all wrecked and shit. It's a fairly labyrinth nerfy battle, because he's only got a couple moves, but it's still really cool. And I like the idea of an X vs. Zero fight. They do the same thing again in X5, where if you're X, you fight against Zero, if you're Zero, you fight against X. And it's very, it's very dramatic. I enjoy the gravitas of that one. A little bit more than this one, but still, fun fight. Cool idea. There we go. And so once you get him down to 1 HP, he kind of remembers himself. Zero. Do you remember me? Yeah, I guess so. Sorry to cause you so much. I'm sorry I fucking tried to kill you, X. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, Zero. So at least there's a little humor in that exchange. X is like, I don't have time to put you together again. Alright, so now we move on to the final Sigma fight. Which I'll show you as we can spot like not. It doesn't make a huge difference with this one. He doesn't have like a crazy like reeling animation or anything, uh, but he does take a little bit more damage from it. Wait a second. I fell through the ceiling into this room. Yet there is a complete ceiling above there. How the fuck did I get in here? How does anyone get into this room? Sigma, Sigma, calm down. I'm, 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 I, give me a sec. I gotta figure this out. You know, another thing that's really fun about this fight is that the, the music that plays is a remix of the Sigma first stage music from the first one. And actually, same thing with his um, final, uh, final stage music, because it's Sigma, you never beat him with just one form, he's always got... So, this is fool, this isn't even his final form. And fun fact, uh, in the first one, his first form is actually a lightning attack, which, if you charge up, looks really, really similar to the one Keanu wishes on you. So, I like the fact that they really try to reference a lot of shit. Even with Wolverine Sick. So, you guys might remember that cool ass wireframe sword thing I fought all the way through this stage the first time, the mini boss? Well, Prepare yourselves. Because we got wireframe head sigma. Okay, I'll find him with the regular weapon. So, the laser beam, by the way, um, you guys might notice me jumping into his head every now and then. Um, the head deals a little bit of damage. That laser beam deals a fuck ton. 
So, if given the choice between the two, fuck it. Touch Sigma's big old ball noggin. It don't do nearly as much damage. Once again, this music is a remix of his boss music from the first game. So, I'm gonna admit, I think this scene is pretty cool. I think the, the fact he, you know, turns into this, like, disembodied virus is pretty dope, and it's a bit of a... It kind of builds on what they were doing in the last game, um, where he's like, oh, you know, my spirit remains intact, I'll find new bodies, you know, it kind of implies that he's, he is a program, which makes sense, because he's a little, you know, he's a an android, he's a cybernetic being, so as long as his mind essentially survives, he can find new bodies. Oh shit. I think the thing I take issue with is the fact that it chucks the whole Maverick Revolution thing up to just a simple computer virus, whereas it's a lot more interesting if it comes down to the robots just having free will and being like, you know what, fuck it, I don't want to serve humanity. The fact that, like, Sigma himself can maybe survive is pretty cool, I like that, and it, it also it would serve to make him more unique, maybe. Ah, but alas, I'm talking about a game series that is many decades old. I somehow doubt that my insights will ever come of use or help anyone else out, but hey, if anyone's watching this and you design games, uh, remember something like that. You take that from me. So his big ass wireframe head is weak against the uh, wire sponges attack, a little strike shot, but it has such short range, it's honestly a lot easier to use fight him like this. Plus it's more fun, you get to draw it out. And I'm reasonably proud of myself. I think I beat this game pretty quickly for someone who hasn't really. I, I, I didn't do a dry run or anything like this before I played it. I think it's been probably a couple of years since I played this one. With X1, I ended up doing. Actually, what inspired me to do it in the first place was I ended up doing a dry run for when I got this uh, new emulator. And then I was like, fuck it, I should just play the Hard series. I love these games, I want to share them with people. And also the fact that I may as well put myself up there with some extra YouTube content. I was thinking of trying to do something like uh, freestyle while I play this, but quite frankly, with this game, that would be way too much. And it's not the most difficult game in the world, but I think my freestyle would end up sucking really badly if I were to try to do something like this at the same time, so I don't want to subject you guys to that. So now what happens is that Sigma will teleport all over the place, and he'll try and just surround you. And once he does that, there's really no way to get him off except to use the strike chain. And normally you gotta do it like, I don't know, maybe ten times, but I already hit him a couple times and he was in red mode, so he's already pretty weak.
and apparently the computer core that holds Sigma is uh, exploding. Mega Man X, I have lost to you again. Each defeat only makes me stronger and serves to bring you closer to your ultimate doom, Sigma boasts. But something's not right. I don't quite understand. I did zero his last of the Doctor's creations. And there is a little bit of a reference toward the fact that Zero is Dr. Wily's final creation. He's his, uh, pièce de résistance. He's his magnum opus. Uh, he's his final, final product. Essentially, what Mega Man X is for Dr. Light, Zero is for Dr. Wily. So, I think Sigma, especially knowing that Zero is the progenitor of the whole Maverick virus, the whole thing that started this, is wondering, like, why the fuck did Zero not end up joining us? So. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna do something unusual, because I gotta take a piss real bad. While this little last scene plays, I'm gonna go take a piss. And I'll join you guys at the ending, give you my uh, concluding thoughts, and, uh, tell you what I'm thinking about heading on into X3. Alright, peace, for now. And I'm back. Oh, perfect timing. Oh, Alright, so now we return to something really similar to X1. Kind of a little callback where we have X riding slash running along and it gives us a cast of characters. So overall, I would say with X2, um, I generally really enjoyed this game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. There are a couple parts in it which are irritating, but even then, quite frankly, it's not too bad. Um, especially if I'm just playing by myself. You know, if you're doing like an LP, you kind of innately want to trench off. Like, I'm at least decent at this game, so having to do something like, you know, do the Magnus Centipede, um, getting the heart, the, the, the sub tank container a couple times, it's a little annoying, but overall, really awesome game. Um, if you can get a copy of this for Super Nintendo, if you still have a Super Nintendo, I definitely tell you guys to. Um, I was playing this whole thing on an emulator, but I do actually have a physical copy of this, which I had to go on an extensive hunt to find. Um, I left it with my little brother at my house, so I don't, I can't pull it up for you, but trust me, I got it. Um, would not want to go and just steal something as magnificent as this game. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are big fans of platforming, uh, especially if you're fans of, like, modern platforming, and you kind of want to go back and see a little bit of where this kind of stuff comes from, it's really cool to go back and play a game like Mega Man X, X2, X3, or, like, the old Super Mario games, and just kind of see how modern games go, and they take what the old games did, and they innovate on top of them. And we got the set of the power versus speed for the bosses. I think Crystal Snail's speed had to be higher than that one, because he has a rocket on it. Ah. Anywho. 
So, let's see, closing thoughts. X1 and X2 are of comparable difficulty. I would say X2 is probably a little bit easier, particularly because, um, like, Sigma's final form, as you saw, is not a pushover, but it's not really difficult at all. And in X1, Sigma's final form is a bitch. So there, there's a couple areas where they're like one's more difficult than the other, but I would say they're both roughly equal. Um, whereas X3, as you guys will hopefully see more recently soon, X3 is a lot more challenging. X3 really steps it up, so let's see if I've been able to build up my skills. Uh, I may not be able to beat X3 while drunk, which is how I beat X1 and X2, so we're gonna have to see, but I will certainly try, because I feel like I'd probably get better, more interesting commentary when I'm a little bit sauced. So. Thank you guys for joining me. This has been Knox Plays Mega Man X2, signing off.